Hey everybody, welcome to Road CC and another of our end of year awards videos. Guys, good to be back. Yeah, we've got all kinds of stuff on the channel. Uh, bikes, we've got accessories, components, components wheels, clo clothing, wheels, even yeah. tires. Lots of stuff, so make sure you subscribe and hit the notification icon so you get notified when new ones pop up. Yeah, now today it's all about commuter bikes. Now, as we know, they can come in all sorts of shapes and sizes, yep. can't they? I commute on a gravel bike. And I commute on an e-cargo bike. Oh. As with all these Road CC Awards, no one's paid to be on the show. These are our honest opinions over the year about what was good and what wasn't good. But we're only going to show you the good stuff, <laughs> so let's crack on with that. Now, if you're willing to splash a thousand pounds plus on a commuter, then the Canyon Commuter 5 is a fast and fun urban bike that provides all the performance that you're looking for. No, it didn't just get to number five because it's got five in its name. <laughs> <laughs> the Canyon Commuter might be a bit too stiff for some people's taste, but this is a superb bike for rewarding your effort if that's the kind of thing you like. It's an absolute joy to get up to speed. It's got really good reactive acceleration yeah. and it's efficient at high speed cruising mm. if you like high speeds on your commute i'm often late on my commute so it's quite handy steering balance and overall bike control are awesome too no matter what speed you reach you'll always feel like you have the right bike underneath you to handle things the commuter 5's frame is canyon's uo22 commuter mm. aluminium offering nicely put together with a mixture of tube profiles it certainly isn't a Friday night rush job. <laughs> some thought has gone into it. And the front end looks super strong and goes some way to explaining that really good on-point control. Mm. Now the second ingredient that, to that excellent handling is Canyon straight legs, oh God, FK0083 carbon fiber fork, which provides no shortage of front end competence. Another pithy name there. Yeah, absolutely. Germans, eh? Yep, you get mud guard mounts, uh, but none for a traditional rear rack. Although you could fit a seat post mounted rack yeah. if you really wanted a rack. Um, if you don't fancy wearing a backpack, for example, though. Yeah. You I don't mind wearing. it too much. Yeah. yeah, The Canyon Commuter 5 features an eight speed Shimano Nexus hub that adds weight, but works well, while the Gates carbon drive offers faultless transmission of power. Now the smallest gear is good enough for fairly testing climbs, although the selection does slightly favor that higher speed riding. Yeah, it's a bike built for speed, isn't it? It is. It's not one for the super hilly, hilly commutes. No. No. Shimano's M200 hydraulic disc brakes are among the best value for money options mm. you'll find. They've got really good power and excellent feel as well. A reviewer, Matt, found that the Commuter 5 was the most fun hub-geared bike he'd ever ridden. High praise indeed. He's ridden a few. He has. He has. Now, if you want all the sensibleness of reduced maintenance and long-term reliability whilst also enjoying yourself, then this is the option we'd go for. This really is a commuting wonder weapon. I don't really know what one of them is, but... but well, that's... it's good. <laughs> The Carrera Intercity Disc 9-speed might not boast the engineering genius of more famous folding rivals, mm. but with very enthusiastic road manners and an excellent spec, this is a folder with significant appeal beyond the traditional commuter set. Mm. And it's only 450 quid. Oh, that's good. This is some serious kit which is far more attainable than most bikes. And the first thing you'll notice when you jump aboard the Intercity Disc 9 is that it's a very pleasurable bike to pedal, and especially to get up to speed. If you're new to folding bikes, you'll be surprised by its brisk turn of pace and ability to transfer power into forward motion. Yeah, it's a really nice bike to ride. It's got good, mm. exciting handling. It's got excellent power transfer. And there's the distinct possibility when you get that that the comfort could take a hit, but that doesn't seem to be the case with this bike. Mm. And even with 20 inch wheels, very little knocks the Intercity Disc 9 off its stride, really. It's a really yeah. easy bike to ride, even over rough country roads, potholes included. That's quite handy. We have <laughs> There's a, a lot of those around here. We do have a few. Yeah, we do. This is a fantastically fun bike, and rather than just being a basic A to B transport tool, you may well find yourself looking to detour to enjoy a longer ride. Uh, it's also nice that you can get your head down for super stable high speed cruising, but then sit up a bit more for a reactive intra city ducking and diving. It's definitely worth avoiding those buses, isn't it? It is, yes. The Intercity Disc 9's frame comes with a main locking hinge in the middle so it can fold in half and another hinge where the stem meets the head tube that means that the front end can fold down. Mm. Now Halford says it takes 30 seconds to mm. fold or unfold. That sounds like a challenge to me. Doesn't it ever? Yeah, right. right. We'll get you on the case. So 
both the frame and fork are aluminium and the 12.5 kilogram weight is fine at this price. Allied with bottle cage mounts, mounts for mud guards and rear racks, a nine speed 1134 cassette and a 53 tooth chainring means you've got the option to venture way beyond benign city slopes and take it to some proper hills. Yeah, it's the, only, it's the only time I ride a 53 tooth <laughs> chainring. <laughs> well, on a folder with 20 inch wheels. Yeah. yeah. The Intercity Disc 9's only real negative is the saddle height. It's said to be suitable for riders up to six foot three, but we suggest you try before you buy if you're six mm. foot over. I found it a little bit. You are not over quite, that, not but quite I'm about six foot one yeah. and I'm on the limit. Yeah. That said, if you're looking for a folding bike, you want a surprisingly rewarding ride, you want good quality components, you don't want to spend Brompton money, um, then the Intercity Disc 9 is, I mean, it's way more fun than you'd expect. Yeah, definitely. Now, we've already said, haven't we, that a commuter bike can come in many forms, and it won't take an expert to work out that the Form Monster 1 in our number three spot is a gravel bike, it is. like what you ride. Yeah. yeah. Now, I'm one of the many people who choose to commute by gravel bike, and the form earns a high place in this category thanks to commuter-friendly features like mounts for mud guards and a rear rack. As I've found, gravel bikes and cyclocross bikes, for that matter, can be fabulous for commuting. Yeah, if you fit the right tyres. Yeah, you do have to do that, because they're built to be tough and resilient. Yeah. And the Monsal here certainly scores there and offers really good value for money too. Mm. At 10.87 kilograms, the Monsal sounds on the weighty side, but it does feel lively and responsive when you get out the saddle. Now, the front end is low enough for tackling a headwind or descent, but not so extreme that you can't sit comfortably whilst wearing a backpack and with your hands on the hoods. Mm. And that can be really handy for when, you, I when don't you're know, negotiating traffic. Yeah, when you're, when you're nipping through town. Yeah. yeah. To get your beers in your rucksack. Now the frame is aluminium, but it feels a lot like high quality steel. It's mm. got that kind of smoothness to it. It takes the edge off any bars and rattling that would otherwise come through. And stiffness hasn't been sacrificed to provide that comfort. Mm. The monster feels tight around the bottom bracket area. It's got a nice oversized down tube and it's got really beefy chainstays. You like a beefy chainstay, don't you? I love a beefy chainstay. Anyway, things are also taut up front thanks to a tapered head tube and carbon fibre fork that copes well with the loads from steering and heavy braking. Reviewer Stu reckons that this is one of the best aluminium frames he's ridden in ages. And he's ridden a lot of aluminium frames. Every week he comes in with a new aluminium frame. The Monsal comes with 45mm WTB Riddler gravel tyres, which are fine, but we'd mm. suggest swapping them for something more tarmac specific. Uh, if you want a bit of efficiency on your commute. Then yeah, like, this is a commuting video. Yeah, so. it is. <laughs> anyway, a SRAM Apex 1x group set provides crisp and clean shifting across the cassette, while the hydraulic disc brakes work superbly whatever the conditions, which is vital for the all-year rigours of yeah, commuting, aren't they? Absolutely. It? Of course, the other big bonus of commuting on a gravel bike is that you can go graveling on it. No you way. You can use it to explore, you know, tracks All the rage at the yeah, moment, absolutely. isn't it? Absolutely. And the Monsal puts in an excellent performance. Uh, it's got a really good balanced ride and good comfort and stiffness. Now the My Rider 1 GB3 takes the commuter bike's runner-up spot. Well, for all the reasons we mentioned in that e-bike video. Yeah, we've done another video about all our favorite e-bikes of the year, the top five. Mm. If you want to see more about this bike, the My Rider 1 GB3, head over to that, that video and you can see that bike and all the others that made the grade. Hmm. But if you don't want to watch that video and you they, just they all want to watch that video. But if you Dave. don't want to watch that video and you just want <laughs> no. the hard facts, this is a small wheeled fold up with a really small hub motor. It's got a really clever FNEO three speed chain wheel system, mm. which means that you can run, uh, it basically looks like a single speed, so you can run a Gates belt drive. And then you don't get oil all over yourself. And you get oil over I yourself. I know all about that. Really nice bike to ride, it's got good range, the gears have got a good range, so you know you can tackle the hills on it, where before that was a bit of an issue with the single speed version. Mm. And it's a brilliant all-round bike for commuting, hopping on the train, doing mixed commute, sticking it in your car, all the stuff, <laughs> having it on your yacht. <laughs> I'm not sure that applies to many of our audience, but anyway, it's well deserving of the number two spot, but shall we find out our winner? Let's. And last, but quite the opposite of least, is our winning commuter bike of the year, the Carrera Subway All-Weather Edition from Halfords, mm. a mountain bike styled urban warrior that comes out of the box with some really useful winter riding accessories and an excellent spec for the money. Halfords has done well this year. They have done they? well this they year. They don't always. They have though. Anyway, yeah. if there's a better bike out there for less than 500 pounds, then well, we haven't heard about it. You get an urbanized, rigid mountain bike with extras to improve riding through winter. It's fun, easy to ride, thanks to gears, brakes, and tires that are all very good for the money. Even the saddle's decent. Even the saddle's decent. 
Now, three features make this an all-weather bike. Firstly, what? it comes with mud guards. Yes, they are essential. They are essential. What's number two? It has heated grips to keep your hands warm in winter. That's... Which is a mm. very unusual it feature is. and welcome. And, uh, and you get a pair of LED lights as well to get you seen on dark evenings. Granted, the mud guards and lights are basic, but, you know, this is a bike that costs 450 quid. Mm. Now, I want to know more about those heated grips. Right, the glow grips are... Mm. They're marvellous, actually. <laughs> we, we measured them at 40 degrees centigrade. That does sound quite yeah, tasty. Sure. It's plenty to help fight the chill. Yeah. like holding on really tightly to keep your fingers warm. <laughs> anyway, the Subway's ride is quite firm thanks to beefy aluminium frame and a rigid steel forks. And the handling is on the quick side. The ride feel is softened by the running tyres a bit softer and they're plenty big enough to do that without a high risk of getting pinch flats. Yeah, yeah, you can take a bit of air out of them and take a bit of the sting out of the frame, can't you? Yeah. Carrera offers a 4630 chain set combined mm -hmm. with an 11 to 36 cassette for a 502% gear range. That's a lot of percent. That's a lot of percent. Mm. So there are plenty of low gears to comfortably get up just about anything a UK city is likely to throw at you. In fact, we think more bikes should be geared like this. Yeah, especially for Bath anyway. Especially for Bath. The Shimano outer shifting is better than you've really got any right to expect on a 450 pound bike. Yeah, really good. And the Clark's clout disc brakes provide plenty of easily controlled mm. stopping power, which is why they're widely considered the best inexpensive brakes by the mountain bike community. Mm. They have a reach adjuster, so they work well with small hands, and they are among the best things about this bike, which has a lot of good things. It does. Yeah. Heated grips. I mean, the most unusual aspect on the subway line of bikes is those 650B wheels. Not the grips. Uh, other than the grips, of course. <laughs> a little smaller than the more common 700C. On a hybrid, 650B wheels provide the ability to fit a wider range of tyres. However, you could always swap them out for 700C wheels with lighter tyres to make the subway into a great flat bar tourer or countryside. Yeah. yeah it's theme. really versatile. It comes with a V Tire Company Speedster puncture resistant mm -hmm. tyres, which are, you know, they're grippy and comfortable across a range of surfaces. Mm. Um, the light tread isn't really something that you want to throw the bike at, you know, you wouldn't want to throw it at some serious mud. Mm. So, but they're good for like dry trails. So, if the subway's mountain bike styling tempts you to a little bit of light off roading, you fill your boots, really. Yeah, that's its target audience, really, yeah. isn't it? Absolutely. Those canal paths, gravel canal paths, etc. Yeah. Anyway, overall, the Carrera Subway is an excellent flat bar bike for round town and recreational riding, handily straddling the gap between classic hybrid and a rigid mountain bike. And the winter friendly features are just the icing on the cake, really. It's got heated grips. <laughs> it's got heated grips. And that's why it wins. <laughs> that's not the only reason it wins. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> so there you have it, the very best commuter bikes of the year. Uh, keep an eye out for more videos on this channel. Uh, we're going to go through all kinds of bikes, um, accessories, clothing, components, all, all the stuff. If you can ride in it, <laughs> we'll review it. <laughs> We've rated it. <laughs> As always, please drop us a like and subscribe if you've enjoyed this content. It really helps the channel out. And we'll see you very soon for another awards video.